Hello and welcome back. This is Introductory Managerial Accounting, Learning uh, Chapter 9, Budgets. We're going to be looking at Learning Objective 3, The Flexible Budget. The flexible budget accounts for changes in revenues and expenses that are expected to occur due to changes in actual activity levels. This provides estimate of what revenues and expenses should be for any level of activity within a specific range. This improves performance evaluation calculations, um, especially when you know your sales team is off on their forecast. Because remember, as we discussed at the end of the video for learning objective number two, part two, uh, the static budget is only good for that one level of production. This one is flexible. Forecasts are a planning tool often used by companies, and like a budget, a forecast represents management's estimates of revenues and expenses likely to occur in a future period. Forecasts are typically prepared after a fiscal period has started and can cover periods as short as a week or as long as several years. An advantage of using a forecast as a planning tool after the fiscal period has started is that the forecast will be based on current information that may be different from information used to prepare the static bu budget. All right, so let's take a look at what a static budget looks like and then our actual results. So maybe our static budget said that we'd have 10,000 machine hours, but then we actually needed 8,000. Well, that means we have an unfavorable All right, the slides say that we have an unfavorable variance, but this is actually favorable. We're happy when we use less than we require. Similarly, um, when we have variable costs of 192, but we budget it for 240, favorable. 25,500, but we plan for 30,000, favorable. 3,800 versus 5,000 for power, favorable. Uh, when we use the same amount of depreciation as we budgeted and it's zero, Cool, nothing. Uh, but then when we use more for insurance than we budgeted and it goes $50 over, that's unfavorable. So add these all up, including this being an F for favorable. No, let's see, do the math. No, again, this should be favorable and this math should follow. And then, um, yeah, because I just, I can't get this to where overhead costs, or maybe do we even include that? Let's see, let's see. Yeah, I feel like we don't even include this one when we go through and add up all these. So let me pause this and get back to you. Yeah, so because this is machine hours, it's not actually a cost. This isn't included on in all of this and likely why this wasn't picked up as an issue. But I will let the slide people know and we will continue on. Just look, um, when we have some, when we actually incur something and it's less than what we expected and it's a cost, then it's favorable, that's good news. We thought we were gonna spend $10 at McDonald's, we spent $8, that's fabulous because we get an extra $2. But if we ever saw something where the actual results was less than the budgeted and it was for cash inflows, meaning I went to work today to work at Red Lobster, I was hoping to make um, budgeted tips of $100, I ended up making $88, still good, but it was a $12 unfavorable uh, variance from what I expected or anticipated to what I actually received. Okay. So a static budget cannot answer this question. When cost variances are favorable, has the company done a good job controlling costs? But rather, the question should be, how much of the favorable cost variance is due to the lower activity and how much is due to good cost control? So just because, um, you know, so what this really means is like, so great, your costs are down, but maybe you sold way less than you thought you were going to sell. Is So are your costs being down actually a good thing? Uh, so when we use flexible budgeting, we can actually answer this question. How much of the favorable cost variance is due to the lower activity and how much is due to what managers can control. So when preparing a flexible budget, we need to keep these items in mind. The total variable costs change in direct proportion to the changes in activity, while total fixed costs remain unchanged within the relevant range. And with this information, we can prepare and we will prepare a flexible budget. So let's take a look at this. 
variable costs are gonna be expressed as a constant amount per hour. In this instance, we have our 240,000 in direct labor divided by 10,000 hours, and that gets us $24 per hour, not four, 24. Sorry guys, these slides come as pictures, so I can't edit them directly, um, but just wanted to let you know that. Okay, uh, sometimes I can edit many, many things, but like this particular thing, I cannot. Uh, okay, and then um, we'll do the same for our indirect materials and our power. And just know that our fixed costs are expressed as a total amount, whereas our total uh, premier variable costs are going to be expressed as an individual cost. All right, so from there, we then take our flexible budgets which give us a range. What happens when we have 8,000 hours? What happens when we have 10,000? What happens when we have 12,000? And we look at 8,000 times 24, and that drives our total costs. And then we take our units times our indirect material, and then we get our costs of that. And we do so on and so forth at each budgeted activity rate. However, for our fixed costs, they remain fixed, and those will flow across. All right, so we've expanded out um, according to our 10,000 hours, and now I want you to do the same for 12,000. So please consider pausing the video, and I will see you back here once you've calculated that last row, that 12,000 row line. All right, welcome back. Uh, what did you say, A, B, C, or D? Because if you said B, 344,000, then you would be correct. And so we look at our total overhead costs, which would be depicted below. But here, I'll just bring up the screen. Uh, we have our 12,000, cross multiply, add it all up. Our fixed costs remain fixed. Gives us a total of 344,000 at 12,000 activity level. All right. So when looking at reports, When using a flexible budget, we end up calculating what the budget is for the same activity that is actually achieved. So we have our actual results. Now we take our budgeted costs times our flexible budget. Act. We take our budgeted costs times by our actual um, activity level, and then we look at the variances accordingly. So my question to you is, um, what is the variance for indirect labor when the flexible budget of 8,000 hours is compared to the actual results? So in order to do that, um, calculate all the way through and then see what the flexible budget is for indirect labor, which would be the variance here. Is it 2,000? Is it 6,000? Is it favorable, unfavorable? Give it a pause. Give it a calculation and I'll see you soon. All right. So if you said A, 2,000 unfavorable, then you would be correct. And in order to calculate this, oops, ah, too many clicks. Uh, and it restock? No. Okay. In order to calculate this, we take our 8,000 units times by our $24 per indirect labor hour, getting 192. We actually incurred 194, so that's $2,000 bad news or unfavorable. It's like, I thought I was gonna spend $192,000 at McDonald's, I ended up spending 194,000, that is bad news to the tune of $2,000. All right, so please do that again, but now do that for the next row of indirect material. Please give this um, video a pause and I'll see you shortly. All right, so if you said, again, A, ah, 1,500 unfavorable, you would be correct. Let's calculate that through. So, and now we've done it for the rest of here. So 24,000, because that's 8,000 times three, and that is going to be um, unfavorable, because we thought we were gonna hit 24,000, we actually incurred 25,500, so that means at the same production level, we incurred more expenses. 
So if we had guessed correctly on our forecast, we would still not have guessed correctly on our amount of costs that we incurred. So now we can actually see, like, you'll see in the next step, it's like, well, why is this happening? Why are these variances happening? Um, but we also have um, a variance for power. We thought we were going to incur 4,000 if we if we had guessed right for the budgeted um, level produced. Um, but we actually incurred 3,800, so that was 2,200, pardon me, um, favorable for an overall favorable variance of, pardon me, an overall unfavorable variance of $3,300. Okay. And you're welcome to do this for our fixed costs as well and investigate accordingly. All right. So when we had looked originally at the question of saying, hey, how much of the 51,650 favorable variance was due to lower activity and how much was due to cost control? Well, here's the thing. The difference between the actual original static budget and actual overhead was 51,650 favorable. However, if we looked at how much was, um, what was the difference between activity and cost control, we had a 55,000 favorable variance due to lower activity. So what was our static budget minus our flexible overhead budget? That was 234,000. The difference between the two was that we actually incurred is we saved 55,000 variants, pardon me, we saved $55,000 um, just because of um, we used less hours, we used 8,000 hours instead of 10,000, so that was 55,000 favorable variants just due to the activity. However, if we look at, hey, if we had guessed right with the number of activity, this is how much actual overhead, these were our actual costs incurred, um, we actually did worse. So we had a 3,350 unfavorable variance due to poor cost control. So why do we use flexible budget? Because we often aren't able to, you know, we don't have a magic eight ball. We can't accurately forecast out um, unless, unless in very certain um, segments of the market. And even then, I, I would be really hesitant to say all the time. I would have said before, like government contracts, but without getting political, um, I don't think that that is even certain anymore, um, at least in um, some countries in the world and likely even ours because of ripple effects. So with that being said, um, we need to know, yes, what is our budget? Yes, what do we actually incur? And then, hey, if we would have guessed it right, what was in our control? How much could we actually um, achieve had we forecasted accurately? And yeah, part of it is going to be, you know, the difference here in activity. We can also look here and say, why didn't you, um, why didn't you forecast okay? Right. So yeah, sure, you got you spent less because you forecasted less. We actually need to talk to the forecasters as well because maybe the people controlling the costs were purchasing less materials because the forecast, or maybe they were purchasing more because of the forecast. Like there's a lot of things that interplay. So it's not just hey we did good or bad, hey we did good or bad, but really what is the story that is being told? Let's dig into it. Let's understand why. Um, and each one of these will give us information for helping management managers make better decisions for our organizations. All right, let's look at what we did this chapter. Last slide, people, you were doing really, really well. Budgets play a dual role in organizations, both planning and control, and offer several benefits, including communication of management's plans, allocation of resources, coordination of activities, and the establishment of goals and objectives that can be used to evaluate subsequent performance. These budgets represent a key element of responsibility accounting system, whereby managers are held responsible for revenue and cost items over which they have significant influence. A master budget involves numerous interrelated schedules and starts with a sales budget, which is based on a sales forecast, and for our manufacturing company, once the sales budget has been set, the production budget then can be, be prepared since it depends on how many units are to be sold. The production budget determines how many units are to be produced. And from there, the various manufacturing costs, budgets, and selling and in general admin budgets can be developed. 
After the detailed budget schedules have been completed, the cash budget, budgeted income statement, and budgeted balance sheet can be prepared. Flexible budgets can be used to address limitations that arise with static budgets when the activity levels differ significantly from budgeted levels. These flexible budgets allow companies to prepare performance reports that break the difference between actual and static budget into flexible budget variances and sales volume variances. All right, and that's budgets. Thank you so, so much for your time and attention. I will see you in the next chapter.